So so let's right now go to blockchain and Concordium. So how did you come out uh, to blockchain? And now you see the technology of blockchain. Let's forget all the crypto. Let's look at the blockchain technology because I know there's so much myth. Everyone has an opinion. And at the moment, uh, the opinions are not very positive, especially in November, as of yeah. November 2020. But things change very fast. So I would like to hear how do you see this, this, the technology and blockchain, especially from an engineer perspective and from the evolution of the technology. You were asking about the, the technology itself and, and what I, I think about what's interesting about the technology itself. But I think, um, so if you look at blockchain technology, it's, it's really uh, a ledger technology where, where you, you, can, you can write records. Uh, these records uh, are immutable. So once written, um, in theory, they can never be uh, deleted or tampered with because, uh, because of the strong cryptography that's, that's built into the blockchain and because all of the, the records are tied together. Um, and um, and then uh, you know they're timestamps, so they are also ordered in sequence. And um, it, it's a distributed system, meaning that uh, a blockchain is really composed of a number of machines that all keep a copy of everything. So it's extremely redundant. It, it it's more redundant than the, the horizontally scalable NoSQL database we built at Uber. In that database, we only had three discrete copies per uh, per cluster, but then we would replicate the the whole cluster to other uh, data uh, or to other data centers. Um, but here, you actually have a copy of every single piece of data on all machines, right? So heavily redundant, um, and which is also the secret because the the heavy redundancy is what protects the data from being tampered with in the end. Um, and, and that's also why when you have a, a blockchain, the more nodes that help secure it, uh, the more safe it is in reality. Um, so, and I think here, here we need to talk about two things. There's like the, the public blockchains and then there's the private blockchains. And and to to my best, right, at least the way I think about it is that I think the public blockchains are the, is the real invention here, right? I mean, ledger technology has been around for a long time and, and sure enough, you can spin it up in your own data center if you want to, and you can say, hey, I'm, I'm keeping everything on a ledger. If you want to see, you can see my ledger. But do I really trust you with that ledger, right? That's really at the, the, the core of all of this. Do I trust that you don't roll a backup on your ledger or that you haven't built in a backdoor somewhere so you can tamper with a record? And and can we really use that as sort of the place where we write our business transactions? How do How would I... How would I trust you, right? And that's where the public blockchains come in and, and, and say, hey, but you know, you don't need to trust me. You can just inspect for yourself. We'll just put it on, on machines that are out there. And if you want to, you can download the, the source code yourself. You can download a binary. You can download the source code, compile it yourself, run it on your own machine. You get a copy of all the data that was ever written since uh, day one. And whenever we write a transaction, you and I, um, when I transfer something to you or we uh, we execute an application where you know we I, I, I lend you some money and, uh, and you borrow them from me. It's all visible on the blockchain because we, we wrote the smart contract that's also on the chain. So no one can tamper with the code because the code is also on the chain. And here is the source code and you can read it and you can compile it and, and et cetera. Right. So that whole thing about putting putting your records out there, putting the code out there for inspection, making the whole thing transparent, that's what creates the trust. And the trust of being able to communicate between people and businesses and systems in a way where you don't have to to use a third party that you need to somehow engage in this conversation, right? So you can take away the middleman. And that, of course, creates some interesting new emerging business opportunities like uh, DeFi, for instance, right? Where you can, I can, uh, I can borrow money from you without having a bank as an intermediary that says, yes, Dinis has now deposited the money in this bank account. And I will now vouch for you, core getting the money, et cetera. So you actually go away from all of that and you use the blockchain as that intermediary. Um, so so if you if you think about the the blockchain technology, right, it's it's uh, slow, first of all, right? I mean, uh, Concordium takes four hundred TPS, which is is quite fast actually uh, compared to Bitcoin um, and uh, and ethereum. but it's still not very fast compared to uh, to the likes of uh, Visa and and these other systems that write millions of transactions per second. Um, it's expensive. Um, we are quite cheap. I mean, because one euro cent per transaction, others have like fluctuating prices. Like Ethereum, for instance, also has fluctuating prices. So if if there's a lot of load, prices go up. Um, but it's still not it's still not free. Um, and then it's it's slow to write and it's it's expensive. It's um, um, it's distributed. 
But um, but what it can do for you is it can provide this transparency. So what you can do with it is you cannot write all of your data, right? You would never put all of Uber's trip data, for instance, on a on a blockchain. That makes no sense. Simply because there are exabytes of data and a, and a blockchain would need to replicate all of those exabytes of data to all of the machines out there. And that would basically just blow up the blockchain really quickly. So what can you do with it? Well, it, it becomes sort of an add on on top of what we already have. You have the internet, you have the mobile phones, you have all of these emerging technologies. And now we have blockchains on top of it, right? And these blockchains give you the ability to to write information between uh, systems that cannot be tampered with, where you can come afterwards and, and prove that uh, this happened. So for instance, if you buy a boat from me, um, you know, you can put the money in in, uh, in escrow on the blockchain in a smart contract, I can put the deed uh, in an escrow. And when the blockchain detects that both of them are there, the, the smart contract says, oh, these two conditions are now fulfilled. It will swap the money. So the money be goes to my account and the deed goes to yours, right? And that way, uh, you know, uh, you you uh, you get to a point where where it it can create something that that wasn't there before, right? This emerging thing, and and maybe you don't even want to put the deed exact deed there. But what you want to do is maybe you put the fingerprint of the deed, um, which is in the form of a hash code, because that doesn't take up very much space, and that way it's it's easier and faster to write and read, and uh, and therefore more suitable for blockchain. So. Um, so, you know, I think we'll find that the blockchain is very suitable for many use cases that have to do with me proving to someone I don't trust or what parties don't necessarily trust each other uh, directly uh, that something happened or that this transaction took place. Um, so it, it creates trust in a trustless world in many ways is what I think is the most important uh, aspect and, uh, of blockchain um, and, and in particular public blockchains, not so much the private ones. So let's look right now in what you're trying to solve with the Concordium blockchain, because you guys, like you said, are more a blue chip um, blockchain that it was created with a with a token CCD, and, and really there's a fantastic team. I think I, if I look at, like you said, Lars is a, a someone that created a multi billion dollars investment bank and actually one of the biggest platforms of trading in the planet, and that worked for twenty years or something more. And as well, Lon and the CEO is vice chairman of of uh, uh, Volvo cars and as well uh, involved uh, as well in in IKEA. So I don't need to say more. So the team is not a conventional blockchain ICO, let's put it that way. We're talking about uh, um, uh, high profile personalities and so forth. So just if you could synthesize what you are targeting in terms of uh, um, the blockchain solutions and how you aim to take forth. Uh, yeah, so Concordium has one one ingredient uh, that uh, stands out from uh, from all the other blockchains out there. Other than we're backed by science, and based on science, you heard all about that before. Uh, we have uh, ID built into the core blockchain layer, and we also have self sovereign ID built into our wallets. So with Concordium, you are now able to not only have this bubble of trust, where this trusted platform where you can you can interact uh, and and create trust in a trusted world, you can also now prove your identity, which creates another layer of trust on top of of um, of the other one that you have. So this enables you to selectively reveal something about yourself that you are from Europe, uh, what is your first name, that you are a certain age, etc. And then going into the new year, uh, we will also en enable other times, types of claims. So, you know, you could put your credit history and then you can prove that you actually have this credit history. So if you could get your Experian credit history on the blockchain um, as a claim that was issued to you, you would in a self-sovereign fashion be able to prove to me that you have good credit history, for instance, right? Um, or you could prove your, uh, uh, you know, your university diploma to me and, 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 and tell me with certainty that you have a certain degree. And that's actually... And I can trace that back to the university that you were working uh, or you were studying at, and then that way I can, you know, get the trust. So it's like a trust pyramid that that you're getting, in. and that's what we we are working with in uh, in Concordium, um, and uh, and 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 playing, uh, you know, playing into that whole trust space and trying to 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 tighten the trust around communication between businesses, people, and systems. Um, while at the same time providing a solid blockchain proof of stake, as I mentioned before, uh, uh, that uh, that is eco-friendly and and doesn't uh, you know uh, eat up a lot of energy and can be run on very small machines and uh, and that way it becomes a it's like a, a light footprint kind of uh, trust system that you can use to build these business applications where you can 
you can start doing business with other people without bringing in intermediaries because you can use the blockchain as the medium of trust.